before we bring in Brady Quinn, the former NFL quarterback, he was on the Pick 6 podcast, and he was on for a little while, but I wanted to give you just a portion of what seems to have set off the internet and some former players in the NFL with what Brady had to say about C.J. Stroud, and here's a portion of that podcast. And then there's some other stuff about interviews, and, and maybe, you know, for example, the Manning Passing Academy, I'd, I'd been told that, you know, he committed to it the night before, just kind of ghosted him, didn't show up. That's football royalty. And when you do that, that's going to kind of set off some alarms from people of like, hey, man, that's not how you conduct yourself, especially around the Manning family or just in general if you're going to be a franchise quarterback. So, uh, look, I still view him as the second quarterback uh, that should be taken in this draft class. He's the most accurate quarterback in this draft class. He showcased the athleticism and ability. Uh, anytime I've been around the kid, he's been an upstanding young man who's grown and matured into the leader that I think um, NFL teams are looking for. So, you know, some of that stuff. And, and as far as the system he plays and all the talent he plays around, he can't help that. He just can deliver the ball like he has and put up the numbers that he did. So I think he'll be the number two quarterback taken, but there is some talk right now, and maybe it's smoke screens. Who knows that maybe some of the other teams are saying, well, wait a second, if Richardson has a higher ceiling, maybe he makes more sense for us to take if we can't have a guy like Bryce Young that we feel more confident about in his processing and decision-making. And uh, to put this in further context, Brady was asked about, you know, could C.J. Stroud be slipping? And, and then the last week, there's been talk, only because Carolina seems to have focused in on Bryce Young, therefore, C.J. Stroud is slipping. Well, if you're going from one to two, that's not a very far fall, or maybe to four. And it's typical around the draft that you start to hear a lot of things. And I thought I'd like to have Brady uh, join us and maybe put it into further context here. He's on the... Uh, show that precedes ours on Fox Sports Radio, Two Pros and a Cup of Joe, the former Notre Dame quarterback who joins us now. How did this set the internet on fire, Brady? Well, as you can imagine, Dan, thanks for having me on. I really thought you were just having me on because it's Meat Friday. <laughs> um, and so I thought you were looking to have a meat stick come on and talk a little ball or some other draft. Wait, but, wait, you called uh, yourself a meat stick? Uh, yeah, that's what I've been called, at least. I mean, at, at Fox, I think when I first joined Fox, they called me uh, Beefo Brady is what they would call me. So I've had to overcome that. Wow. I, I guess I'm a, wow. I'm a good guest in that respect for Meet Friday. Yeah. Um, yeah, this really became a, uh, I guess, a firestorm, if you will, probably about 36 hours ago. And it was because someone had clipped off the clip that you just played. But what they did was they created a headline that created this kind of false narrative in regards to the entire focus being about the Manning Passing Academy and uh, C.J. Stroud's decision not to go, uh, which was odd because, one, it wasn't the first time that we had talked about that, maybe on that podcast, but uh, on Two Pros and a Cup of Joe, we had talked about that probably a couple of other times months ago um, in regards to, you know, hey, if there's any concerns about C.J. Stroud, what have you heard, either from executives, people who are within the industry, who are insiders? And, and so I kind of brought that up. But, of course, no one actually listened to even the clip that you just played, where if you listen to the clip, I, I think you could un understand then that I was very complimentary of C.J. Stroud, both in my impression of him and my assessment of him. Uh, and I'm pretty sure either on this show or definitely on Big Noon Kickoff, I'm the guy who said he was going to win the Heisman last year. So uh, it was a little bit odd to me that there was such a visceral reaction to really just the headline. And all it showed me was no one actually listened to the podcast. No one even clicked the link to listen to the actual quote uh, from that clip. And and we can get into to furthermore some of the dynamics, but really the context of even that conversation before – that part of it, we were talking about how could a player be dropping and why would CJ Stroud be dropping? And so I was, I actually personalized it and talked about, you know, my experience going through the draft. And that's why I'm pretty sensitive to this kind of stuff for a lot of quarterbacks, because it's hard to overcome stigmas that get attached to you. I mean, Dan, I'm not sure if you can believe this, but you know, when I was coming out, I'd heard this kind of leading up to the draft and there was a national radio show host at the time who is like, I'm hearing he's too jacked. He looks like a savage without his shirt on. It's affecting his accuracy. You know, not sure if he's going to be able to do that. I don't know what national radio show host that could be, but I, I, I remember hearing that sort of thing. And it kind of stuck with me throughout the course of, of my career. It's like, oh, he's too built or too muscular. 
We've heard that a little bit about with Will Levis. And I kid, by the way, because I do believe at some point you had brought that up in a show at some point, Dan. Um, but the point is... Wait, wait, I'm wait. Sensitive. That I said you were too jacked? Uh, yeah, I, I may be sensationalizing that a little bit like we tend to do sometimes in the media. I'm just kind of joking. But I think you had said See, that maybe someone had set up... No, what was I was told... Muscle bound or whatever. No, what I was told was that you weren't consistent enough in the intermediate throws. Okay. And then look, that's someone's assessment. That, that could but, be a fair but, assessment. But that's a former quarterback who told me that. So right. you know, I stand by that. But but no, I, no, I just so I, I, we're I understand. Okay. And, and, and all, all I'm pointing out is when the muscle-bound thing came up about Will Levis, people then start saying, well, yeah, like, just like Brady. And I was like, okay. Um, you know, but to let me, let me one, go back to the Manning stuff, though, because – that, well, th- let, that, me, what, let me let me finish this point and we'll go back to okay. it. Okay. But the reason well, the reason why I bring that up is because and I'm sensitive to it because I, I think a lot of times first impressions mean everything in the NFL. When you come into the league, especially nowadays with the way the media cycle works, you have a small window, and if you have this stigma attached to you and you can't overcome that, it becomes very hard to overcome that over the course of your career. And it, it really blew my mind when I saw the reaction from people like Ryan Clark. Uh, like RG3, or even Jalen Ramsey and Quandre Diggs, guys who have never, uh, I've never spoke to them. Um, we, they don't know anything about me, my work ethic, uh, film breakdown, anything else. And obviously didn't listen to the clip. Because even as I talked to Ryan Clark last night, and, and I think as he heard it, he then kind of realized, okay, he was much more complimentary than I realized. So, you know, I think it became a little more controversial for a couple of reasons. Uh, probably because people just read the headline. That's one. And the other, because I do think people are sensitive to, and especially when you have David Mulugata, who is CJ Stroud's agent, who's also Jalen Ramsey's agent, who's also Quanjay Diggs' agent, who Ryan Clark's very comfortable and, and close to, who's also trying to protect the reputation of his client. The problem that he, he needs to worry about is not me. I'm one of his biggest fans. The problem is he needs to worry about other people who obviously have, you know, have that perception for whatever reason. And, and so, again... I, I don't, I don't read a whole lot into it. I didn't really care whether they went to the Manning Passing Academy or not. But it was something I was told, and I felt like, all right, like of the things that if, you're, if you have questions about C.J. Stroud, what are they? Not really many, but that was something that was told to me by a number of people. But you know how the business works. You know when you say I'm hearing and you put ghosted the Manning family and you, you know the first family of the NFL and – you know, that you could fall because of that. I mean, that's that's a juicy headline. That That's made for the week before the draft, and people are going to run with that. And you're right. People don't read or listen to an entire interview. You know, we, you know, unfortunately, we don't. And when you put ghosted the Manning Academy and you were hearing, well, when you hear, that's a report. That's Brady Quinn reporting, not, you know, if I say I'm hearing, I'm reporting. I, I don't think right. – yeah, so I think you're doing that. So you're told by a credible source that he ghosted the Manning – he no-showed at the Manning Passing Academy, correct? Yeah, that was what I was told. Okay. And, and, and again, and I think our job, being in the media, is to take that information because it's part of our job to say, like, what are you hearing? If, if we have people who are telling us that sort of thing, it's important to say that. But it's also important then to whether that's credible or not. And the reality is everything I said afterwards discredits whatever that is. So again, I, I think a lot of us kind of find ourselves in this fine line of, you know, I, I was fortunate enough, but unfortunate enough where my career wasn't successful enough, but I played for a lot of different teams and I crossed paths with a lot of different players and front office people and coaches. And so when you get to know people, you know, obviously you're going to hear a lot of things, but it's, your job in one way is to communicate that. But in the same way, I'm also trying to portray to people that's not a concern. And, and this young man should be looked at as the second overall pick or the second quarterback taken, which if Houston passes on him, I, I, I mean, those rumors, I don't even know what to make of that. But that's also part of the job, too. Unless people just don't want you to tell anything. And we just say, hey, well, I think everything's it's, great. I think you've got to be careful in how you frame it. Because if I listen, and I listen to about six minutes worth, where you talked about, well, you're in the system at Ohio State, uh, under pressure, he's not good. Um, you talked about you. Well, his, you threw an, you on. threw away interviews. You you threw away that that word kind of floated out there. They didn't follow up on it. What happened in the interviews with the teams? Because 
I, I don't know what you heard, but you, you made a reference to that. So what, Again, is he a bad interview? So like, so like the S2 test, maybe it wasn't as good as someone like Bryce Young. And okay. no, not that, he's a, not that he's been bad at interviews. That hasn't been the case at all. Um, but in regards to how every one of these guys conduct themselves, there's differences, right? And they're all being compared to one another. Yeah. And, and it's a more relationship to the Carolina Panthers with the number one overall pick. So I wasn't saying anything different than anything that's already been said or reported in that regard. Because if you have the number one overall pick with a team that needs a quarterback, they're comparing all these guys. And so, you know, as far as Bryce Young goes, he's blown everything out of the park. There's not as many reservations about it. CJ Stroud, too, has done that to a degree. There's just a, a few people that I've talked to that there's some concerns there. Again, not my opinion, but what others. So that, that's part of this whole deal, though, Dan. And so I, I don't know how you want, like me or anyone else, to do our job when we're asked a question, but we're also trying to provide our personal opinion of why whatever we're hearing shouldn't be read. There should be a whole lot that's read into it. Well, once again, I'll go back to what I said that, you know, people take the easy way out when I hear it, then I want to hear more just to be fair. And if I have a problem that I would say that, or sometimes framing it, how you frame it, that's really important with people. If you say, look, I'm going to tell you some things I've been told that I don't agree with. If you sure. state it and it, like you are emphatic, sometimes when you're on a podcast, it gets loose. You're just talking. It gets loose. Yes. hundred percent. Yes. And that's 100%. where people, and, and they, they zero in on those things and they want to get something. We're leading up to the draft. They're looking for a headline here. No, and I understand that. And, and, and it probably could have been framed better. I mean, I think I'm using probably more of the, the wordage that I was told. Yes. And, and so however you want to portray that, right? But when the Manning Ca Passing Academy comes out, what, June 23rd, 26th, it was of 2022, and they've got a list of guys and he's on that list and then he ends up not being there. Is that uh, a big you know, deal, maybe, Brady? Is that a big deal? No, it's not. Okay. And that's, that's what's crazy about this. <laughs> okay. Is for some reason, like this caught fire, like it, it attacks his character or whatever else. I'm like, I, I, I don't care. I, I don't think it has any impact. And by the way, no one's listening to me or any other analyst that talks about it. And it's not going to persuade them one way or another. And furthermore, this is that time of year where you get so many things that are thrown out there. Yeah that are smoke screens or don't have any validity to them just to see how teams react to them. So I, again, no one's going to listen to the podcast. They're just going to you know read a headline. And the hard part is, is like, you know, then it's like, well, you got to frame it better. It's like, well, no, I think people should probably read articles and not just the title, or no. they should probably listen to the podcast no, can't and do not it. just no. jump to conclusions. You got to protect yourself, Brady. You do. I've said things on this show and I'm going, wait a minute. Somebody is grabbing it and running with it, and then you can't – it's like you're trying to catch somebody at the Boston Marathon. You're not catching them. And that's where you got to protect yourself when – you know, did you talk to Ryan Clark yesterday? I did last night. Okay. Yeah, it right. was a good civil conversation. You know, I think there's going to be a, a difference in how we kind of see some things. But, again, you know, he's someone that I respect as a former player. I respect him when he was a player. respect him as an analyst. But I didn't take that approach – to really him or anyone else, right? You know, and that's the thing about Twitter is everyone wants to kind of take some some approach to someone they don't know instead of just reaching out and calling. Well, Jalen so Ramsey just, calls you out and said you were a bust and you should have gone. Like, that has nothing to do with this. I, I would yeah. never question your ability as an analyst because you didn't, you weren't a star in the NFL. Like, Right. It, well, it, and, and again, it's it's like – how do you want to address that? Like, yeah, I, I know things didn't work out the way I wanted them to. Yeah. I, I'm glad they've worked out for him the way they've wanted him to. I've always thought he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Okay, let, but, let me get this before I run out of time. The one, the quarterback you have the most concerns about on the field who could be drafted in the first round is who? Well, it's, it's Anthony Richardson, and it's just because of lack of experience. Okay. I mean, quarterbacking is an experience-driven position. Uh, he probably has the most, he has the most, I won't say probably, he has the most upside of anyone. I don't know that we've ever seen a quarterback with the athleticism he has, the arm strength, everything. And to me, like when I go and uh, turn on the, the Tennessee tape and I watch him flip his hips and turn around and, and deliver a strike on a deep curl route, I sit there and go, there it is. You know, when you see other instances of that throughout the course of the season or in games, there's just some inconsistencies because he's young at the position. But there's some risk because you know, to me, I look at Josh Allen and I say, everyone kept saying he was inaccurate and he was coming out from Wyoming. And it was 
a poor argument to be made because they just look at completion percentage. If you watch the tape on him, you're like, okay, he's got a live arm. The guys he's throwing to probably, you know, are having a hard time coming out of the breaks, picking up the ball, catching the ball. But if you give him an offense, he's in for three years. If you give him supporting cast around him, he's going to look like a really accurate quarterback. And it just so happened year three, he explodes. And they got him Stephon Diggs. And they got him, you know, he kept him with Brian Dable the whole time. You know, that's the same thing for Anthony Richardson. You know, someone like that, I think, needs that sort of stability. Really, all these guys for that matter. But probably him more so than anyone else, you know, for that reason. So he can continue to grow and mature in the position. Can we take anything out of context with what Brady said? Yeah, that's no problem, Dan. We could do that. I'm going to go with uh, Brady Quinn says the next Josh Allen is Anthony Richardson. Oh, okay. See, that's funny because I just heard him say that he's too inexperienced to make it at the next level. Mm. Boom. That's That's how it works, Brady. (laughs) I, I really thought, Dan, you were going to pick up more on the whole jacked up thing. Like like when I came in, I, you, it kind of flew over your head a little bit with that one. So, Oh, no, I knew you were talking about me, but I didn't recognize the quote because I don't remember saying that because you're too jacked, that meant you couldn't, you couldn't be a, a great That's quarterback. That's the thing, Dan, is the quotes don't have to be accurate anymore. You just create a headline and run with it. Right? Like, again, in the same one-minute clip you played, I'm saying the guy should be the second quarterback taking second overall pick and complimenting him, but no one hears that because no uh, one actually listens to All it. right, meat stick. Um, have a good weekend, all right? You know? Thank you. I'll, I'll do my best. And don't skip leg day, okay? I think you're spending a little too much time up top. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard that once or twice before, you know? I think you need, like, it, it, like a Saquon Barkley thighs, you know? You could have been oh, a better man. quarterback with Saquon Barkley thighs. I, I wish I had his thighs. I mean, I, they, I, can't, I don't oh, want to get too, 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 now too see, deep into it. That's going to be taken out. Oh, man, I wish I had his thighs. On Meat Friday? It's yeah. Like perfect, Whoa. You, know. you are our meat stick, our meat puppet. Uh, thank you, Brady. Thank you. We appreciate it. Have a great Thanks, weekend. Guys. That's Brady Quinn. He works for Fox Sports. <laughs> oh.